Good afternoon. We're back with some more Lord of the Rings LCG. And today it is Shadow and Flame on Nightmare difficulty. In playing a swarm deck, it's Outlands but with Bond of Friendship. So I'm only running two of each Outlands character. But they're mostly going to serve as cannon fodder with a little questing against the Durin's Bane. The regular Outlands swarm deck I was playing isn't so good against this particular quest. In this case, I want to use Frodo, Leadership Frodo, to lower threat from 1 back to 0 each round so that I don't have to engage during Spain until I'm ready to, which makes the quest much, much easier. To open the game, I'm thinking about whether I want to do Ether Swordsman or if I want to save up resources for Giant Bear. I decide I'm going to save resources at least for one round. So I quest for six. Durian's Bane is going to make an attack. The shadow cards in Nightmare Difficulty are going to come from the special 10 card shadow card deck. They're all pretty horrifying. And this one is deal three additional shadow cards from the encounter deck. So first one's a blank. The second one discards all my attachments, which I don't have any. And the third is a blank, so no problem there. Just two damage for Baragon. I've got Yorth out to heal that damage. So I will make two progress. I didn't use Frodo's ability on turn one. There's no point since I don't have any threat to reduce. And I'm going to get out the Ether Swordsman now using Spirit Resources because I'm saving my Elrond Resources and AONs to get Giant Bear into play as soon as I can. I decide not to play anything else here at the moment. And I'm just going to start using Frodo's ability to reduce my threat by one each time I quest successfully. So 7 threat against to my 8, make 1 progress. Second deep isn't going to be cleared for a while because it can't be well unless Durian's Bane has damage. Now I can get the giant bear in and having drawn another giant bear is great. That'll give me the attack power that I need to take down Durian's Bane when it's time. And once again, we'll continue to get set up. I have to discard an ally. And that's actually a tough choice, but I think they need the Ether Swordsman for questing, and I need the Giant Bear for combat, so it's going to be Eorth. And once again, Frodo allows me to lower threat by one, which means I don't engage during pain. During pain, he has an engagement cost of one. Get an Envoy of Pelargir in as a blocker. And a Knight of the Swan. Questing for 11 here. It's going to be a counter spell, so I'm going to make 4 progress. That will put me into phase 2. And the forced effect takes place at the end of the quest phase, so I make immediately for progress for having committed a hero to the quest. This round I can afford to get another giant bear out and I'm pretty well set up now for fighting with Durin's Bane. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so I make I have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I should have made two progress there plus four for committing a hero to the quest. I'm debating whether I want to fight with the troll and I decide not to. I decide I'm just going to leave him there in the staging area. Now I'm thinking about whether I want to play Unexpected Courage or not. I don't run Vilya in this deck. So I'm thinking about whether I want to play Unexpected Courage or save my resources and play Thalion.
And I decide Thalion is the way to go. So once again, questing for 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 to account for the cave troll. And it's put the top enemy from the discard pile into play engaged with me, which is just going to be an orc drummer. No problem. So it's going to be four progress plus another four for the committing a hero to the quest at the end of the quest phase and we're on to phase three. Durin's Bane is going to make an immediate attack from the staging area and it will be the shadow card that allows him to make another attack if he destroys a character. So I'll put the second attack most likely on the Knight of the Swan. And that's going to make splash damage. For each excess point of combat damage it has to go on one of my characters. That's going to be five points of damage. Probably should have kept the giant bears healthy. And I actually owe one more point of damage here, which I probably would have put on Elrond or maybe on Talion. I don't know why I only dealt out four. But I did quest successfully, so Frodo lowers threat again. And Dark Pit enters the staging area, and I'm going to go ahead and move there. And a giant bear will take out the orc drummer. So I'm pretty well set up to start fighting Durin's Bane now. can stop using Frodo's ability. So I'll go ahead and play four long here as a blocker. Not going to have to get engage the swordsman for a while at threat 20 since I'm at threat 1. And just going to quest for enough not to take on too much threat. Quest for 8. Maybe 10. And I think I reconsider and move it back to 8. So, each player must discard one attachment. I don't have any attachments, but I will take two threat. I'm questing for eight and facing ten. And now we're going to have the attack from Durin's Bane, which I'll put on four long. And the shadow card is discard all cards attached, deal one damage. No problem. It's going to kill him. And now it's my turn to do some damage. Can deal 3, 7, 11, 13, so that'll deal 10 damage to Durin's Bane. And he's going to regenerate 3 at the end of the round. So it'll take a few turns to take him down. Get a Knight of the Swan here, that's helpful as a blocker. Don't have enough to play Forlong or Faramir. Could play Unexpected Courage. Can't really play attachments without triggering a Counterspell. Or can't really play events without triggering Counterspell. But I 
I did anyway, which I should not have done. So counter spell would trigger there. Which means I should discard the top card of the encounter deck and if it's an event, I cancel the treachery or cancel the event and discard my hand. Definitely not something I would have been willing to risk. So I would not have played Heed the Dream there if I had remembered Counterspell. And the next card is a Treachery, so definitely would not have played Heed the Dream. Let's see how it affects the game. So we have heal one damage for each point of damage dealt. I think it's five. It's possible it's only supposed to be one since the Knight of the Swan only has one HP, but I included the overflow damage in the healing. Not 100% sure that's the way it's supposed to go, but that's the way I played it. So in theory, I would not have actually revealed that card. That would have been the discard that would have taken out my hand and canceled my Heed the Dream. So I'd be up one Knight of the Swan, but down one Ranger of Cardolan. Decide I'll risk an attack on a giant bear, and it does unfortunately kill him. And then I can return damage for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If it was the Knight of the Swan instead, it would be ten, so that'd be seven damage. And he'd be at 9, 6 HP now. Timely aid is not terribly effective here. But it will enable me to heal Baragon. So he can tank attacks. Watchful Eyes, not going to do a whole lot here. And the Shadow card is going to do splash damage if there's any extra. In this case there is not. So this should be, he should be at 6 health right now. This is going to deal 10, should be 9, so it would be 6 damage. He should be at 12. And now 9. but with the counter spell gone, in theory. And one other card revealed. I could just cancel that. I'm going to remove a character from the quest at their swordsman and just take the fourth threat. Shadow card in this case, deal one damage. So Baragon does survive with three wounds.
So once again, I can attack. I can do 10, 14, 15, 16, 10, 11, 12, 16, 17, 18. This would be 19, so it would be 16 wounds. But he should have two less. So he should be at 25 right now. And then if I trigger the Dark Pit action, he'd be at 22. So I would need cards totaling more than 5 from the top of my deck to get the win. and it'd be seven, so I don't think that my error for getting the counter spell affects anything. Given the state of the board, the cards that came after, it would have minorly changed a few, of, a few things if I'd remembered and played it properly, but wouldn't have impacted the win because didn't have any effect on any of my heroes. Just a slight damage reduction. Discarding my hand. Well, the cards in my hand at the time didn't actually end up impacting the game. In fact, they're all still there. I think I do actually use Gladrum's Greeting now, but just for vanity's sake, really. Because I didn't need it for anything. So now, I'm actually not sure about the text of Phase 3. It says when Durin's Bane leaves play, the players win the game, so perhaps the game should be over right now in a victory. But why does the quest have one quest point? I interpret it as you need to put one progress on endurance on the on phase three. I don't know if that's true according to the wording of the quest. So just to be safe, I'm continuing to play until I get one progress on the quest. It's going to take one or two turns. This is probably superfluous and unnecessary, but I do it anyway because that's how I interpret the phase three quest, but it is entirely possible, in fact probably more likely, that this isn't necessary and the game ends as soon as Durin's Bane leaves play. Because it says as soon as Durin's play leaves, uh, Durin's Bane leaves play, the players win the game. It's just on later quests in Lord of the Rings LCG, when that's the case, when you don't need any progress, then there's just a, a blank when it, when in the quest points space on the quest. So in this case it's probably just a symptom of the game being relatively young and therefore hmm, some uneven decisions were made in regards to the quest design which made it a little unclear in this case at least to me. But I am just for the sake of my own edification, continuing until I get one progress point on the quest, which is a virtual guarantee at this point. There are some things that can go wrong in this quest with this deck, but it's a pretty strong deck against the quest. Really, any deck that uses a lot of blockers and Leadership Frodo or even Spirit Baragon to reduce threat by one every round is going to do really, really well against this quest because you can just set up at your leisure and then win whenever you're ready. And I did make the mistake with Counterspell, but a relatively minor thing that I really don't think is going to significantly impact the game because of my board state at the time. The fact that none of my cards really came into play except for Faramir at the end and then only in a part of the quest that I don't think I needed to do but even if I had to discard Faramir earlier, it simply would have been a matter of time to clear out the enemies and get my one progress on the quest, if that's something I needed to do. I'm not really sure. But in any case, this is one of my favorite quests, and the Nightmare Mode does make it more difficult, but 
there are some cards in the game like Leadership Frodo which just kind of break the quest and make it pretty easy. Now, if I was trying to use a deck that I'd used on a lot of other quests, like uh, for example the Outlands deck I was playing or any other number of decks, it might it would not be this easy because the mechanics of the quest would work kind of as they were intended to. You would not get infinite turns to set up, you would just get one turn and then you would have to start tanking during Spain. But when you get infinite turns because you're lowering threat by one every round with Frodo, it's really quite an easy quest. So, thanks for watching.